Welcome, I am Emir, and let's look back in hindsight. This video is part of a long series. Bitin Serie, Fair Use Saga, Linux Mint Saga. To watch the full video, click the link on the end screen or in the description. Thank you. Chapter 2 Developing the Minty Identity Three months after 2.2 Bianca, 3.0 Cassandra went live on 30 May 2007 as Beta 24. This is the first and only Mint release which we know the build number of. Build numbers are not a thing in final Mint versions. 3.0 Cassandra was based on 2.2 Bianca, which was based on 2.1 Bea, and so on, ultimately being based on Ubuntu 6.10 EGF, released on 26 October 2006. While Cassandra was compatible with Ubuntu 7.04 Feisty Phone, released on 19 April 2007, its code base was not Feisty Phone. New Mint tools were Mint install. Hello, Captain Obvious. And the Linux Mint software portal. These would merge to form the software manager, the program name of which is still Mint install as the surviving entity, I guess. Mint disk would stay for internal drives. NTFS config would cover external ones. One app still bundled with today's Mint first showed up in Cassandra, Thunderbird. Another that would be part of Mint until being dumped in 19.3 Tina, a step back I think, is the GIMP. I use these both all the time. No, this video is not sponsored. Cassandra had 3D effects thanks to Compiz and Beryl. Here's a video from 2007 showing these in action. Not even Vista could do these. And no, neither could I in today's virtual box. The start page, early mint's welcome screen, was a flash animation featuring links to mint's sites. Nothing like XP's flash tour. Cassandra was the first to use the classic mint logo. Here are other new features. For the Cassandra KDE Community Edition, Clem handed over the reins to Jamie Bu Burse or Burse. Imagine asking about doing a Mint CE DVD and ending up falling deep into the Mint KDE rabbit hole. CE maintainers were not paid. Their work was a labor of love. Just like Emir's Bitten. Support on Patreon, please. Because of this best effort strategy, CEs were released later than the main edition. The KDE CE would suffer a critical bug 
causing a crash when the user chooses to manually partition the drive. These led to changes in Mint development, which I think is still followed today. Finally, the XFCE flavor, maintained by MerleWiz 79, debuted. Speaking of quote unquote ideal for old computers, I wonder how 21.3 Virginia XFCE will run on a laptop from the 2000s. You mean if it will run? If, if it's good? Something amazing, I guess? I've introduced the CE maintainers, but not yet Clem. Hang in there. A Cassandra Fluxbox CE was floated. But, error 404, not found. By the time Mint celebrated its first birthday, four successors to 1.0 ADA had already gone live. Jumping to December 2007, by that time, 3.0 Cassandra was downloaded from Mint's main mirror 2 million times. Was this success? For Clem, quote, All we know is that we are relatively doing very well. We're probably among the top 10 operating systems used in the world. And we're definitely growing very fast. End quote. Four months after Cassandra, and two betas later, 3.1 Selena was released on 24 September 2007. Another build, another new set of wallpapers. Dark mode before it was cool. Some firsts. The release notes contain screenshots of new features. Mint Assistant runs on first boot. OOBE for Windows users. There's no Rover or Merlin or question mark but the icon is a waving happy light bulb. The fortunes could be turned off from here. But why would you? Print to PDF. Beating Ubuntu. And Mint Upload. Think SkyDrive. Now OneDrive. Media Fire, Mega Upload, Not Mega, or Rapid Share. Yes, I am old. But not paintbrush old. All users would share a 1 gigabyte web space on which they could upload files smaller than 10 megabytes. Files would stay online for two days. Mint Space users had an additional 1 gigabyte space. They could upload files smaller than 1 gigabyte, which would stay live for seven days. In August 2007, Mint Space for one year cost Thirty dollars. Thirty United States dollars, maybe. And also came with what you see now. The light edition could be turned into the main edition. 
by downloading multimedia support from the Linux Mint software portal. While Selena came with Mint Constance, it also had goodbyes. WinFS, I mean Beagle, in favor of better performance. Ubuntu's Update Manager and Update Notifier. I get why these were new. A user fresh of Windows would think that all updates should be installed because that's how Windows works. Even back in 2007. Not Linux though. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That aged like milk. Removing Ubuntu's update apps because upgrading is never safe led to violent reactions that are not covered by freedom of speech. Clem said a Mint tool would be released to replace them. Mint update would see the light, but not in time for 3.1 Selena. The Mint team would be proud of Mint update. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. No more Tomboy start note on first boot. Though Tomboy was still installed by introducing app, not app get. Mint beat Debian by a few years. Here's new tools and upgrades. Selena's welcome screen was a start page, not that. A start page on Firefox with links to Mint Wi-Fi and offline documentation. The start page was used for tracking and income generation. Tracking was limited to the number of distinct IP addresses hitting the start page. Hopefully, nothing more beyond that. Or worse. Another goodbye, though only for Selena, were the KDE and XFCE CEs. But the release notes of the CEs for 4.0 Darina says that they were based on the Selena CE versions. So either lost media CEs or wrong release notes. After the Light Edition's release on 14 October 2007, the first episode of the Linux Mint podcast premiered. It was pan Poor. Atrocious. This should not have been posted. Just like Emir's Biten. Clem was constructive in criticism though. I can only wish. 1075 what? I wish I were as gracious as him. Me? Don't feed the trolls. Where is that first episode now? Error 404. Lost media. No surprise that the podcast had to be reset twice. The first proper mint cast with Charles Olsen went live in December 2008 and is not lost media. The hosts may have changed since then, but mint cast is still going. 
On 23 October 2007, the Mint website finally caught up with the Cassandra look. Carlos Porto, designer of the classic Mint logo, replaced Clem's design with the Mint coat of paint. This look would last until the flat solid color design took over around the time of the Emir's Biten on the Father of Philippine Christmas Music and Pinoy Jingles. A 14-year run. 14. That was how dedicated Mint was to familiarity, to continuity. A few years more and the 2007 website would have fit in with the Fruitiger Aero nostalgia. You know what else had a 14-year run? The tagline, quote-unquote, from freedom came elegance. Do la liberté, evonu l'élégance. Why French? Time to address the elephant in the room. No, not the room. Saving that for another fair use saga. Linux Mint was created by, if it isn't, hello Captain Obvious, from the flag, Irish based developer Clement Lefebvre, French living in Ireland, that's the European Union for you. Clem still leads the overall project and development team. Give credit where credit is due. CTTO will never do. Not even in copyright law. Mint started not as a distro, but as a website for hosting Clem's Linux. Excuse me again. GNU Linux related articles. That's why the site in October 2006 looked like a general resource site for Penguin users. Why the name Mint? Clem said, quote, Mint is cold. It's short. It's fresh. It's easy to type. And to remember. And in English, it even means quote unquote cool, good condition, perfect, etc. End quote. Chill. Relax. Don't lose your cool. Back to Clem. Quote. I also like the way Linux was associated with the poles, the penguins, the ice, the way a pristine kernel was called, air quotes, vanilla. And so Mint was kind of close to all of that. End quote. Clem then put out an ISO which became more popular than the articles. So the site was redesigned in December 2006 to focus only on the distro. It also redirected to a new time .de subdomain. .de German hosted in France, EU. Mint returned to the linuxmint.com domain on February 2007 with the header update. The forums were opened by November 2006 and the blog began on 3 August 2007. 
in this world of titans becoming lost media it is refreshing to see both the mint forums and blog still online and active no need to go to the wayback machine except if pictures are broken although all blog posts 324 pages as of 19 march 2024 seem to have come from clem alone he welcomed other authors to join mats gaya aka husa founder and moderator of the mint forums would post the monthly newsletters bu later going by jamie would provide updates on the kde flavor sometime in 2013 the blog was forked segfault covered technical news and stories from the development team no one seemed to know about it it eventually shut down apparently the mint team worked with the linspire team at one time linspire's a fair use saga for another time 4.0 darina drop on 15 november 2007 3 months after selina the software portal became well hello captain obvious after quote on quote massive surgery and localization mint install could install software without opening the software portal website and it showed more information before installing a program to solve the problem of uneducated updates mint update replaced ubuntu's update manager and update notifier it seems to resemble today's update manager exact for the security levels spoilers time shift mint desktop allowed restoring the default splash screens for programs like the no more the game i did not get what this feature was supposed to achieve Darina ship with liberation fonts liberation free as in freedom aka more than fair use substitutes for microsoft office fonts compiz fusion is activated by default finally a new repository structure that should explain what upstream means by using gutsy's package base ubuntu 7.10 gutsy gibbon released october 2007 darina supported ntfs partitions out of the box no more need for both mint this and ntfs config goodbye i hate to see you go but have a good time another mint tool mint config bid goodbye from the gnome version that was reconverted for the xfce flavor 
Darina had three CEs. The usual, KDE, XFCE, and Fluxbox. But, hmm, teka muna. Wait a minute, kaping mainit. I'm pretty sure you won't get it. Only KDE got a final version. An alpha build of Debian edition, not a community edition, also got made. Alpha, because it was not meant to be a daily driver. This was not Linux Mint Debian Edition, LMDE. Based on Debian testing, the Debian Edition aimed to, quote, give us the Mint team a better appreciation of the pros and cons related to using Ubuntu and eventually a better idea of what can be achieved in the long term. Or, in case Ubuntu goes towards a direction, we do not want to follow. End quote. An E17 CE was announced. But besides promotional videos and promised release dates, quote, if we can't test an ISO, the war room, for example, and take control on its release strategy, we can't guarantee its quality. And for that reason, it can't be called Linux Mint. End quote. Or, in SpongeBob terms, can't soil that good mint name. Soil it. Soil it. Free as in freedom does not mean free branding. The mint team was sensitive about this. On the flip side, mint had to get permission to use the name Linux. Bottom line, copyright is different from trademark. But hey, you knew that already. What were you expecting? But hey, that's just a theory? That's not just a theory. That's the law. What became Marian Linux had at least one release before being erased out of existence. Lost media? The Mint team also considered a Fedora 8 based experiment. This edition did not see the light because the Debian edition took up much time. The Mint team may have bitten off more than they could chew. Mint menu was ported to Fedora 13 though. With the Rina, Linux Mint was no longer Ubuntu with multimedia support and default third-party software. 
with the focus on the desktop and on the user experience. The distro had earned its reputation as stable, easy to use, and very good. Or, as Clem put it, elegant. The software portal received a fresh coat of paint post Darina. But even in its plain form, it already looks like the smartphone app stores that would arrive shortly after. Hipster Mint App Store, before app stores were cool. After a time skip, by February 2009, a year and four months after the Rina's release, it still had a 10% share. Two months later, it would reach end of support. A month after that, 4% of Mint users were still on the Rina. On September 2009, Darina had 3% market share. On January 2010, the figure was just 2%. Mint 4, the XP or 7 of early Mint. Darina would be the last of the 4.0 series. There would be no Mint 4.1. Instead, the Mint team would take its time to develop Mint 5.0. In the meantime, Mint would introduce a search plugin on Firefox to earn more revenue. The hope was to earn enough. So, Mint could become a company and afford all them taxes. Because not everyone can get rich quick. Seven months after Darina's release came 5, not 5.0 or 5.0, 5, Elisa. Elisa, not Eliza. Released on 8 June 2008, Elisa was the first long term support LTS release. LTS releases would be supported for two years and would receive backports. Any changes from Succeeding non-LTS releases, which would drop every six months. Even though it was an LTS release, by March 2009, Elisa only had an almost 20% market share. Two months later, that dropped to 11%. I guess users thought that newer would always be better. This could explain the spoilers shift in LTS strategy by 17 Kiana. Elisa was also the first with a user guide. Can you imagine spending seven months firming up documentation only for it to become lost media? Apps on the Mint menu, Start menu, could be run on startup or uninstalled through the right-click context menu. 
related packages and dependencies would appear on the uninstall prompt. Apps could also be added to favorites and arranged through drag and drop. I prefer this design compared to modern day mint cinnamon. Mint menu preferences introduced more options, such as activating the 10 most recently opened documents list. Here are other changes to the menu. Mint update would provide more information and could be set to auto-refresh on the time interval selected. Manual refresh work too. On screen were more new features. Mint install could be backported to older Mint versions or on compatible distros. Sound familiar? Mint install allowed choosing the repository from which to install an app. This is similar to the choice of either the system package or the flat pack version in today's Mint. Mint install also supported searching app packages, installers from the now lost Get Deb website. The app also introduced a front end to app. No need to use the terminal anymore. So why do I still keep doing that? Thanks to a batch.mint maker, the team claimed that the software portal should feature about 10 times more applications for Elisa than for Darina. Elisa only managed to get 480 applications, 5 times Darina's 94. Dot .mint files would be used until Mint 8. Mint 9 went back to raw.dev support. Mint upload's email feature was dropped. If a user wanted to email a file uploaded using Mint upload, clicking copy and opening an email app would be the way to go. More actions were added to the right-click context menu. Menu. English. Set as wallpaper. MD5 sum. And open as root. Open as admin. Not only the desktop received updates. Terminal also became more colorful. And the fortunes got their own mascots. I wonder if the Sandman was included. Definitely not Pong Pagong and Kiko Maching. After relying on third party backup apps, the homegrown Mint. Backup saved the contents of the home folder. Third party apps, Rhythm Box, Audio Player, and Transmission. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Or not. Made their first appearance as default apps. Finally, a rundown of other changes. 
Elisa was the first to have a revision 1 because of a security issue in Mint Assistant. A revision 2 was announced to be released after Mint 6. But you know how these things go. Error 404 not found. No idea if the original or revision 1 is lost media. What I have is the X64 edition, which did not have revisions. Elisa had the usual light edition. Community editions, CEs, were KDE, Fluxbox, and XFCE. An Enterprise Edition was planned, but did not pan out. Mint scaled down its target to paid support for small companies and individuals. But the team was just too small to deal with that. Donations, advertising, and sponsorships were the way forward. Lack of time led to Error 404 Mint 5 Debian Edition Not Found Again, not yet LMDE Elisa would be the final hurrah of the classic Linux Mint line. It was the last to be built on top of its predecessor, 4.0 Darina, which was built on top of its predecessor, 3.1 Selina, and you know Deception. Back in 4 August 2007, the Mint team posted, Upgrading is never safe. Warning against upgrading to Feisty. Ubuntu 7.04 from April 2007. For the longest time, Mint was based on Ubuntu 6.10 EGF from October 2006. Don't be confused with this cheat sheet. It's about compatibility, not code base. For 5 Elisa, the Mint team embraced change. The first Mint X64 edition used the then new Ubuntu 8.04.4 LTS Hardy Heron. For version 6, Mint would have its Longhorn moment. A development reset. It's second. Let me know what you thought of this video. Comment below. Please like and share this video on social media. Subscribe and ring the bell. Watch all Emir's Biten. Balik tanaw slash in hindsight. Support the show on Patreon, on PayPal, or through crypto. Thank you to my sibling G G Arts for my avatar. Check out and support her work by clicking the links in the description. To watch the full video, the link should come up. Here on the end screen. Now. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.